Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Roughly Estimated presents the real 100 meters men's world record progression. So if you're an aficionado of this stuff, you will know that Calvin Smith starts us off with 9.93 on the standard timeline. And this was this race. Calvin Smith comes through, his head's back, arms pumping, a flailing style, unusual style, an amazing sprinter. He ran 9.93 in 1983, and he sets us off for these familiar timelines here. So you've got Calvin Smith and then the split caused by the Ben Johnson versus Carl Lewis, 1987, when Ben Johnson ran 9.83. That was a massive world record, full tenth ahead of Calvin Smith on this, the standard timeline. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about something that came up in the comments when I did this video on the 9.69s, where I compared Bolt, Tyson Gay, and Johan Blake. And they each ran 9.69, but they did it in completely different ways. Bolt, for example, sat down on the couch for the last 10 meters. But of all the comments, and some of it is just, you know, filthy internet arguing, the most interesting stuff was the idea of looking at altitude and wind speed to see how it changes the times. There's a lot of back and forth about this. And uh, so I found this model, I've known about it for a while, where it's by a chap, this website here, Jonas Murica. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He's done a very, very sophisticated model, which I'm now going to roughly estimate. But the point is, you put in your time, you put in your meters per second, you put in your altitude, or you select a city, and you ask it to correct your time. So if I reset that, let's do 10. We're going to run 100 meters in 10 seconds, like I could ever really do that. Uh, maybe if I had a 200 meters per second wind behind me. Um, wind speed, 2 meters per second. Let's choose Lucerne, just because Lucerne just sounds so great, doesn't it? And correct it. So I ran a 10 second time, but now with the help of the wind and the help of the altitude, the thin air, I'm improved. I'm improved by, I, I'm rather to say my advantage given to me was 0.11. So my 10 was a secret improvement. And on a fair basis, I would have run 10.11. So I've gone ahead and I've created these adjusters. This is the wind adjuster using Jonas's model, except I roughly estimated it. I basically took a 10 second, uh, 100 meters, and I didn't bother with the full grid. It's probably quite a subtle surface here, but I worked it. It didn't make up too much difference. And I sort of convinced myself that I could just take a percentage uh, a percentage to switch the time and then I did the same thing with altitude and altitude has a very subtle effect at the low altitude down here deviates from linear and the uh, high altitude it deviates from linear but really not by much um, so I ended up taking an average uh, to roughly estimate uh, what was happening and then I applied it to the full data set and I adjusted at everyone's times and then I plotted it so we could see who the real 100 meter world record holders are. And I found a couple of really interesting things. Here we go. Let's start with the Ben Johnson adjusted just because it's shorter and it's quicker. Pink is adjusted. Orange is the Ben. Guess what? We start off with Calvin Smith again. Instead of 993, he runs 991. It was recorded at 10.04, but he ran it into a gale. Look at that, 2.2 meters per second, and he wasn't at altitude. His original was adjusted to a 10.07. So his 993 was supported by a 1.4 meter per second wind behind him and tremendous altitude. So Calvin Smith, though, you're a dual world record holder on two timelines. Uh, you're a world record holder. Because um, 
You know, my training has been going good, and last week I ran a 10-11. Um, that was a pretty good win, like 1.92, but it was legal. So I feel good at this time, and I think things will go well. Now we see the adjustment for Ben Johnson. His 8-3 uh, becomes an 8-9, 9-8-9. And his 979-985. Maurice Green, your 979 becomes a 9.8. Just a hint above, even though it's not much there. The rounding up rules and uh, it takes us up to 9.8. So according to my standardized, roughly estimated 100 meters world record progression, before 2000, no one had run under 9.8. Maurice Green coming closest. And then we have some sad news, especially for me, in my fabulous video about Asafa Powell and the world's most beautiful gangster world record where he just slouched across the line, stopped running at 80 metres, put on a full pimp outfit and just turned in a 9.74 that could easily have been a 9.66. Please check out the video. I'll put it up there in the top right, I think, if I'm good enough to do that. And now we get to Bolt. But Bolt loses one world record. He loses his 972 because really that was a 981, too much wind. And here at New York City, a place I know well. But he does keep his 969, which is now a 9.7. And he does keep his 958, which is now a 963. But now let's move to something interesting. I'm going to show you the races. And a quick thank you to TNF, which is a tiny YouTube channel, but had this very precious race. Thank you. Cadet speedster Otto Bolden says he is bitterly disappointed over his failure to break the world record in the 100 meters in Athens on Wednesday. Bolden came up two hundredths of a second shy of Canadian Donovan Bailey's world best 9.84. It was the third fastest time in history, but Bolden files to go under 9.8 seconds later this season. So why did I just show you those two nondescript races? Well, let's go back to the book record, the Carl Lewis timeline, as I've called it. And now let's put the adjusted timeline and see what happens. The first thing, of course, we start off with Calvin Smith, as you know, one month later, two hundredths quicker. Lewis, his 992. Your 992, Carl, King Carl Lewis, I'm afraid, is a 998 under standardized conditions. It is not a world record. It is actually eight hundredths of a second behind Calvin Smith. So Lewis, no longer a world record holder for that one. Leroy Burrell, you were a world record holder in the standard book in the Carl Lewis timeline because you ran 9.9 .9 seconds, except it got adjusted up to a 10 second and it disappears. So who is this? It's Leroy Burrell again. So we had Calvin Smith, a dual timeline world record holder, and now Burrell is a dual timeline world record holder. Here, he gets adjusted to a 9.9 .9 seconds, matching his 9.9 .9 official, I mean, the universe is, it's a simulation, it's mocking us, uh, but it was a 997 recorded, but he ran it into 1.3 meters per second in Barcelona. And it's actually a very interesting race. Uh, it was in one of the rounds leading up to the Barcelona Olympic final, which was won by Christie. And in fact, Burrell, as you'll see now, beats Christie out in what is, in fact, roughly estimated, standardized, real 100 meters world record. It does make you think about these things, of course. How accurate is this model? But very interesting. So well done, Leroy Burrell. And now we have somebody new. Frankie Fredericks. You were the world record holder. That's why I showed the race. Frankie Fredericks, you ran 9.86 seconds. You are the first man to break 9.9 .9 seconds 
on an altitude and wind adjusted real world record basis. Frankie Fredericks, world record holder. First man under 9.9 .9 seconds on a fair basis. And then you hold that record, Frankie, for nearly two years when Atto Bolden, as you said in that video, you were disappointed not to break the world record. Be disappointed no more. You did break the world record. You ran 986 recorded, but you ran it into a headwind. Not much altitude. 985. You are the world record holder. As you said you were disappointed, you knew it, the form you were in. And now, Maurice Green, you, bec you are also a dual timeline world record holder but you don't break 9.8. You make 9.8. And now, Asif Papal, as we know, sadly, misses out because he had too much wind helping him here for his 977, becomes a 985. His 974 has altitude and wind in Rieti, Italy, and that 974 becomes a 984. And Bolt, Bolt's 972 disappears all the way up to the 981s. Uh, but the 969 becomes the 9.7, the wind was zero. And the 958 is a 963, meaning that on a real adjusted basis, from roughly estimated, we have a new world record progression. And what it also means is I can do new world rankings and I can start to look deeply at how the modern set compare on an adjusted basis to see who's really ahead. One thing I need to note is Justin Gatlin who never fails to do something really incredible. And somewhere in this data set, I don't think I can find him now, Justin Gatlin ran a 10 second time into an absolute gale. He ran it into a minus 3.5 meters per second gale. And his 10 second became a 9.8. <laughs> you know. He also ran with fans behind him in Japan, which is an awesome video. And I'll link that video, actually. I'll put something on the screen. So that was it. That's the real news. The real world record has changed hands from Calvin Smith, but a different race. Leroy Burrell, but a different race. Frankie Fredericks. I wish you'd known. Atto Bolden, I wish you'd known. And then we get Maurice Green. Congratulations. You're also a dual timeline world record holder. And Bolt, of course, you remain untouchable. Thanks very much. If you want to see some calculations that I'm doing now about the pressure on the world record and how the adjustments work, please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I'm really enjoying cranking out these videos for you. Thank you.